this episode of the Beginner's Guide to Magic, we're going to take a look at the makeup of magic cards and how to read them. We'll also take a look at the different types of cards and when you can play them. The phrase read the card is often thrown around at magic events and during gameplay, but it's not all that simple if you don't know what you're looking for. Magic cards are written in their own language and becoming fluent will improve your game and reduce misplays. If you haven't already, I suggest you take a look at our previous videos in the series as we would use some of the terminology explained in them in this video. Regardless of card type, the layout is uniform. The name of the card is found in the top left hand corner and the casting cost of the card is found in the top right hand corner. Halfway down the card we see the card type and subtype if it has one. In the bottom half of the card we see the card's abilities and mechanics. Beneath this, we find the flavour text of a card. Not all cards have flavour text and this is usually due to a lack of space if a card has lengthy abilities. Flavour text sets the tone of the card. They are usually quotes from Magic the Gathering characters and can be uplifting, solemn or humorous. Flavour has no impact on actual gameplay and many Magic players scarcely read or enjoy the flavour. Personally, we like a bit of flavour here at Making Mythic Manor. In the border of the card we can see the set code the card came from which card number of the set the card is, and the language it is printed in. This works in conjunction with the set symbol which tells us which set the card belongs to. Finally, we have the name of the artist who designed the artwork of the card. Artists are usually present at GPs and other major magic events, so if you want a card signing or to purchase original artwork, this is where you can find the artist's name. Now I want to stress that whilst what we are about to say applies to near enough all magic cards, there are a few exceptions to the rule of thumb generalities we will be making throughout this video. For example, in the magic set Future Sight, Wizards of the Coast opted for an alternative layout which saw the mana cost curved on the left hand side. Furthermore, special edition collectible prints of a number of magic cards are available. This negate, for example, has only the name and casting cost written on the card. This is enlarged due to Negate being a staple in many blue decks and so it is well known amongst seasoned players. However, if you are not sure what a card does, do not hesitate to ask or call for a judge during any competitive gameplay. But don't worry about those cards for now. Cards can be categorised under two headings, permanence and non-permanence. Let's begin with permanence. Permanent spells remain on the battlefield until they are otherwise removed. This is usually either through combat removal spells or abilities. Creature spells have their creature type written next to the spell type. For example, this Leonin War Leader is a cat soldier. This means that any spell or ability that affects either cats or soldiers will affect the War Leader. For example, if an enchantment said cat creatures you control get plus one plus one and another that said soldier creatures you control get plus one plus one then the War Leader would get plus two plus two. In the bottom right hand corner of a creature card you find the creature's power and toughness. Power on the left shows how many points of damage that that creature would deal to another creature, player or planeswalker during combat. Toughness on the right shows how much damage a creature can take in one turn before dying. When a creature's toughness reaches zero in a single turn, it dies. Let's pretend we're in the combat phase of your turn and you attack with the war leader. Your opponent blocks with their centaur nurturer the two creatures deal damage to each other equal to their power. The war leader deals 4 damage to the nurturer and the nurturer deals 2 damage to the war leader. The nurturer's toughness is reduced to 0 and dies, leaving the battlefield. Whilst the war leader having only taken 2 points of damage is reduced to 2 meaning it survives combat. At the end of the turn toughness is reset and damage is cleaned away. Enchantments give game advantage in a wide range of ways, some by advancing your board state, others by hampering your opponents. They can only be removed from the battlefield by spells or abilities. Some enchantments have text instructing you to enchant a permanent, for example a creature. This means that when casting the enchantment spell you must target a creature to attach the enchantment to. When the enchantment becomes attached to the permanent, the permanent gains the abilities of the enchantment as described. However. When the permanent is removed, i.e. if the creature dies, the enchantment leaves the battlefield and goes to the graveyard. Artifacts are similar to enchantments but in large colourless. Some artifacts have static abilities which are in play for as long as the artifact is on the battlefield. These can only be removed by spells or abilities. 
Some artifacts have the subtype Equipment. When an equipment is in play, you may pay the equipped cost to attach it to a creature you control. The equipped creature then gains the abilities as stated on the equipment card. They remain equipped until it dies or you choose to equip a different creature. Unlike enchantments, the enchanted creature, if an equipped creature dies, the equipment remains on the battlefield and can be equipped to another creature by paying the equipped cost. You can only equip at any time you could cast a sorcery spell. Planeswalkers are usually game changing and have a big impact on the board state. If ignored, they can often take over a game. Some planeswalkers have a static ability which is a constant whilst the planeswalker is on the battlefield, similar to an enchantment. Planeswalkers enter the battlefield with a number of loyalty counters as found in the bottom right hand corner of the card. During your turn you can activate a planeswalker once as part of your main phase. You do this by either adding or subtracting a fixed number of loyalty counters to your planeswalker, triggering the effects of the activation you choose. For example, you may add one loyalty to this Ajani to gain 3 life. Ajani will then have 6 loyalty counters in total. In Paper Magic this is usually represented by a dice. During combat, players can choose to attack their opponent or a planeswalker the opponent controls. Rather than losing life, planeswalkers lose loyalty counters. When a planeswalker has no loyalty counters, it dies and leaves the battlefield. Continuing with the example, let's say your Ajani is then attacked by an arc like Phoenix. The Phoenix has a power of 3, and during damage removes 3 loyalty counters from the Ajani. Lands can be categorised into two types, basic and non-basic. Regardless of land type, you can only play one land per turn and they have no converted mana cost. Basic lands are printed in every set and it does not matter which set your basic land belongs to, they are legal in all formats. They also do not have the restriction of having a maximum of 4 copies of a single card in your deck, so you can play as many basic lands in your deck as you wish. There are 5 types of basic land, island, forest, plains, swamp and mountain. If you haven't done so already, take a look at our video on Colours of Magic for further information. Non-basic lands are released as part of a set and rotate out of standard along with other cards. Non-basic lands often offer additional abilities to players and can act as a pseudo spell or fix your mana colours to help with consistency when casting spells. Now let's take a look at some non-permanents. There are two types of non-permanents, instants and sorceries. Sorcery cards can be cast during your main phase and often direct the player to complete an action. Instants can be played at any time you hold priority during either player's turn. As with sorceries, instants will direct a player to complete an action. Instants and sorceries can also contain mechanics from the set in which they were printed. These could offer ways to reduce the cost of a spell, or provide bonus abilities if certain criteria is met. This feels like a good time to expand on the legendary rule. Spells with the legendary super type come with additional restrictions which means that you can only control one permanent on the battlefield with the same name as that card. For example, if we control a God Eternal Kefner, we cannot control a second copy of the same card. You can cast the spell, but during its entry to the battlefield, one must be sacrificed and leave play. However, you can control permanents with the same character, provided they have different names. God Eternal Kefner can be played with Kefner the Mindful, even though they are the same person. Just be mindful that whilst artwork may differ from set to set or even in special edition prints, it is the English name of the card which must be different to control both permanents. This is true of all legendary permanents. Finally, with the release of Dominaria in 2018, we got a new card type of legendary sorcery. Since this is a new type of card, the stipulations are printed on the Dominaria cards to remind you of the card's restrictions. You can only cast a legendary sorcery if you control a legendary creature or planeswalker. If you have enjoyed this video, please do like, share and subscribe and be sure to check out our previous videos in the Beginner's Guide to Magic. If you would like a certain topic covered or if you are having trouble with any particular areas of the game, please do leave a comment below and we will try to get to it and make a video for you. Thanks for watching, see you next time.